I'm about to blow. I gotta stay on my hustle, you know that I'm grinding for sure. I came out right from the bottom, now they see me chasing my goals. Now they see me on the go, yeah. now they see me on the road. It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow. I'ma shoot for the stars and we ain't for the gold. It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow. It's time to hustle, yeah, it's time to grow. Careful, dude, careful, dude, they get some up. What's up, bro? Uh, what's up? Welcome back to Hustlers. I'm your host, Loss. Um, we got the man, Jay, sent me on today. What's up, brother? Hey, bro. How are you? Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for jumping on, Jay. Um, the Samoan or Gili, as, uh, as some people know. <laughs> First up, Jay, just give a bit of value to the uh, to the listeners, bro. Tip, who's winning the NRL? NRL? I'm going to go... Look into, ball. Look into that ball and tell me. I'm going Parramatta. No. <laughs> I'm going Parramatta, baby. I've you got back- a feeling, bro. I have a weird feeling. You're backing dill bags in the boys. Yeah, bro. I've got a feeling, man. They're just... Usually they like, you know, obviously they die in the ass, but I've spoken to a few of the boys there and there's, there's a different swag about them. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to go into the into the finals with a bit of a chip on their shoulder, you know? So... Yeah, and I like that. Underdogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bro, I'll make a quick shout out to a sponsor of the podcast, uh, Keep the Change. Um, obviously, over at YKTRC, you guys are um, well, ISIS big into self development, um, learning about your money and whatnot. Where this guy runs like a free email newsletter, you sign up to it, learn about your money. Um, he sends it out weekly. He makes nothing from it, but he pumps heaps into uh, advertising and stuff for it. So, um, free financial literacy newsletter learn about your money learn how to look after it um especially for your kids one day bro so um click the link in the description and sign you up straight away easy as that um, bro uh, what's the latest g what's the latest pro- projects and whatnot uh man obviously we're in lockdown here in sydney so just been um just been cruising but we've been um sort of doing some we're doing some work with um, a betting agency called Picklebet. <laughs> they're like an e-sport, they're an e-sports betting company. Um, so we're doing like organizing a little collaboration with them. Uh, we'll be doing like a scope for a Sydney type e-sports um, vlogs and content, which yep. is going to be pretty cool. Um, what else? Uh, obviously just this merch, uh, organizing merch that's dropping on like the 16th of this month. So um, sorting all that out now. Got the samples yesterday, but yeah, we're just um, just focusing on on um, you know content with BSC. We Scope and I did a Scope for Simi today um, this morning, and um, that that didn't go too shabby, but uh, <laughs> that was fucked. And then um, yeah, bro, yeah, but we're just it's it's sort of hard to really do much with. We're sort of planning on what we're gonna do do after lockdown, like with travel restrictions. If we can go to New Zealand or if we can go up to Brizzy. Gold Coast, so um, yeah, event and stuff like that. But mostly just just sticking to like these, just doing the podcasts and yeah, yeah. How does your process go with like um, like merch and shit, Jay? Do you do you take your design to the big boss and then is it what like a few months before it actually gets made or? No, nah, well they've all, they've sorted a pretty fast process on how everything gets made, but um, so. Sometimes, you know, if we've, if we've got like a certain idea um, or like if we want something pretty much exactly the same as what we send in, we'll create like a mood board or, yep. um, you know, we'll just message Luggy because he, he, he squares it all up to actually fit on tees that then get like printed and designed. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll send him sort of the vibe on what we're going for. And uh, he's a wizard on the computer, man. So he just sort of um, puts it all together and, and um, yeah. But we we uh, the plan is to drop um, new merch uh, in line with our podcast individual podcast um, every month. So you know sometimes people miss out on like the pre sales and, and things like that. So we'll, we'll be um, we're, we're sort of trying to design a month ahead now. So nice. yeah, yeah, it's good, Fair man. Enough. It's good as well. Like it's cool just to have the opportunity to to you know get some extra money off. Um, you know merch and, and stuff uh, so yeah so you get like a is that like a um, percentage cut for you or um, yeah it, it works 
the percentages all um, are all the same, but yeah, it's all it's all cut up amongst um, obviously certain businesses making some coin, and but we're we're getting some coin as well. Um, but yeah, it's, we've been pretty blessed in that regard. To so a lot of people are unable to make money during this, this period. So yeah, it's been we've been really lucky in, in that in that space. Dude, what was what's lockdown look for you guys? Because I've I've been like seeing all the boys' stories and shit. Obviously, I was over in the Shire earlier in the year. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. I still see everyone all out and about and shit. Is what's is lockdown different there to here or? Well, there's like a few different rules. Like you have to be five k from your house. Um, if you're training, uh, you have to wear a mask. If you're not doing any outdoor activities, um, yeah, it's. It's, it's weird, bro. You go down to Bondi and it's just people are lying on the beach and tanning. And yeah. so I guess that that's, I think that's like counted as physical activity. Or, um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's weird, bro. You can get pulled over at any time, you know, if you're in the wrong place, uh, wrong place at the wrong time, you can just get fine. But it's, yeah, it's, it's weird, bro. It's still, it seems busy, but yeah, you can't, you can't really do much. Everything's closed. Yeah. So, just benders at home. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the first time I saw your stuff ever was, um, was it Paint of Jordan? Is that what it was called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. That's the first time I ever saw like your page and whatnot. I think I posted it once. Um, yeah. Come along to some paintings. But so how did you like get into art and that? Well, I, um, I was living in Melbourne and I was sort of like going through a hard time mentally, bro. And like, didn't really know anyone down there and then COVID sort of started and um so I was sort of stuck at home with and then like work dried up as well because you couldn't couldn't um uh, it wasn't essential so they were making cuts so I, there was this like canvas at home and I just painted on it and posted it on my Instagram and then yeah just heaps of people started hitting me up and I just rolled on from there and then when I moved back to Sydney the boys didn't believe that I actually was the one painting them <laughs> Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So they were like, they were like, prove it, prove it. But then <laughs> one day, yeah, <laughs> it's not you. I reckon it's, I reckon it's your message or whatever. So then, yeah, anyways, they, um, I got two canvases and, and like an hour, I just made two, two, made two paintings, posted it on Instagram. And then it was weird, man. Honestly, it was, it was crazy. As soon as I'd post a painting within like an hour, that someone would buy it. Fuck. So it's they started off the business side of art i i wasn't had no idea of so yeah. i'll tell you about it so it's like the canvases if you get a really good quality canvas um that's stretched properly and everything that can range from 100 to 250 bucks oh to shit. Three, so to, depending on the size yeah um so like if you get like a two meter a two meter by two meter that's like that canvas itself you're probably looking at like 200 bucks and yep. then then the paint um can you hear that yeah that's all good oh, uh, yeah um um so then you then you're gonna buy the paint and the paint side <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> my language um no more swearing <laughs> swearing um so then the the paint itself is like around 150 200 if you're getting spray cans as well that they're about 25 to 30 bucks 30 bucks a pop um so and then also as well shipping depending on the size two meter by two meter the wrapping of the piece you're looking at around 100 bucks because it's, it, eh? it's got to be protected real well yeah yeah and then you've got to pay insurance and then you've also got to pay for the actual shipping and because it's such a like it's a big piece plus it's fragile, all up to ship it can potentially cost between two fifty to five hundred bucks. Holy! <laughs> so, so I didn't know that man, and I didn't I didn't know that at the start. So then, anyways, I fucking pumped all these paintings, smashed them out, and then I was like, man, I made heaps of money, and then. I went to get them all wrapped and stuff. And I was like, holy shit, it was more than 50% of what I had charged. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, this is fucked. And then um, that was like, that was like such a bad experience for me because I was like, fuck, but this is torture. But then 
I, I got in contact with a, an artist, a mate of mine, and he goes, the best way to do it is paint off, um, a, like paint off like a stretched canvas, just get it, just, just get the canvas, not uh, unstretched. And you can still charge the same amount, um, but the shipping costs is like 50 bucks. Cause you roll so, it. And then, Cause you roll it. And then also as well, buying it unstretched, just the canvas itself, it's like, 50 bucks per meter so you can buy a three meter massive beast for like 150 bucks yeah fuck yeah, yeah yeah so so um that changed it all up for me was just learning learning the ins and outs of that so that's what you run now you do that so you still do it uh no i haven't painted in a while man i sort of had a break um i painted like a shitload of pieces and sent them all out and it sort of took it out of me um but when I moved to my new place, I've been looking at like, um, I've been looking at uh, like spaces in Alexandria and yeah. uh, around the city, just where I can get away, get away from home. Cause I was painting at home. So I was like, I'll go in the garage. Mm. Cause sometimes I'll be like, I feel like painting at like 1am in the morning, I'll go in the garage, I paint. And then I sort of wasn't getting away from home. So I was, I was actually going a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually went crazy for a bit, bro. Especially with the spray paint fucking fumes and it was it was it was crazy man it was a crazy time bro fuck that's crazy um how did so obviously you're in yktr now yeah, yeah. um how did that come about jay like wh- wh- where did you 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 met us quite a while ago um I yeah i met ice so i knew chico met chico probably about six years ago and um uh, met Normie and Ice through him and my and my cousin, um, and this was when he just started YKTR. So it was you know the, the content and stuff wasn't actually a thing. Um, and then you know over time he was doing it, and um, I would always make a joke like "fuck, put me on your vlog, put me on," and he's like "no, no, no." And then um, I think it just got to a stage where like, I'd pop in and do a podcast with the boys, drunk and stuff, and. You know, it would get a good reception from people. So he, um, him and I just sort of were on the beers one one afternoon and he just said, fuck, should we just give you a podcast and see how it goes? Yeah, fuck. We sort, of, we sort of just ran with it, man. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Because I, I knew within myself that I had obviously a bit of a weird personality and like to talk shit and, um, you know, I can chop it up with, with pretty much anyone. Mm. So I was pretty confident in myself. Um, you know, uh, but there was a the growing pain still is when, you know, uh, I, I don't know, within a month of when I started podcasting, yeah, you sort of just get to this hump and you're like, oh, shit, you know, you, it's hard to get people on and, you know, to keep that same energy and, um, you know, you got to change up the, the conversations and try and not make it too repetitive. And so I'm still learning all those things now, but it's it's going pretty well. Um, I just think after lockdown, we're going to be able to, my idea was, I don't know if you watched Grouse and a few Reds. Yeah. I've watched a few of them. Yeah. My, my, um, my idea with that podcast is to make it like a really big on interaction. So when lockdown ends, I want to, I want to link up with, you know, YKTR supporters and fans or whatever, what do you want to call them? Um, and you know, do challenges in different countries and, yeah. you know, um, just get amongst it, do live podcasting, shit like that. So um, I'm really excited for that show. I think it's it's got some good legs. So. I think you're in the right space, eh, bro, because, like, even if you think of, like, um, art and stuff, um, for someone to go and want to do art and, and feel like they want to paint on canvas and you have some sort of creativity and, like, just, like, you know, podcasting, vlogging, um, and all the ideas you come up with, like that, that's creativity as well. Uh, yeah. Different and different aspects. But where, where do you think you found, find your like, creativity from? Do you sort of, have you always had it or you kind of get it from people or? Um, my, my mum is an, an amazing artist. Um, wow, she yeah. like could draw anything, literally like it, make it identical. Um, she was, she was a pretty creative person. I think I just used to go around, I'd be, be around the house and stuff and I'd just find these little drawings here and there just while she's on the phone or whatever. But she was a pretty creative person. My brother, before he passed away, he um, 
he was an amazing artist too. I used to just find heaps of his artwork, just paintings and stuff around the house and shit. Um, yeah, and draw little, little sketches and stuff like that. But um, the, my first interaction with art actually, because I knew I had a bit of a creative side, but I never knew, I never really looked into it. Um, but it was back at high school. I went to Kings and I, got, I was in detention. <laughs> um, the that hour or whatever 40 minutes of the tension was uh we had to paint <laughs> so i painted this um this fucking big painting with like markers and acrylic and a bit of oil and then the teacher go the teacher comes up to me and he's like holy shit that's fucking sick but <laughs> not in those words but he's like that's sick and um and then they ended up putting in an art exhibition that the school had running at, at um, that at that time and um I think this lady bought it for like 1200 bucks or something like that so that was like my first thing I, people were like man you can paint but i just well i wasn't really like into it it was most, mostly just rugby in my mind i was like rugby 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 so so yeah it was, it was um it was funny to to get back into it now i still really really love painting and i love art and i love expressing myself through my artwork and even the connections people that i've met through painting um has been pretty pretty cool so um uh, once lockdown ends i'm planning a uh, art exhibition in bondi with a friend of mine um, we're going to do a bit of a collaboration a bit of a live show a bit of fashion involved in it um so yeah did, we, did you go to king's college your whole schooling or i went to king's prep and then i went to king's college and left around fifth form oh, oh yeah how'd you find did you board there yeah i went to boarding school there yeah How'd you find that? How'd you find Kings? I went to St. Kent's, bro, so not too far. Oh, right, right, yeah. Um, I I loved Kings. Um, I think only in hindsight you realise sort of the um, the skills and everything you pick up from a school like that. Yeah. Uh, it was hard at times with, you know, just being an Islander around like a, you know, a bit of a, a, white, a few, school. Yeah, <laughs> white school. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was pretty hard to... You had to bite your tongue sometimes being on scholarship you can't really yeah you know, there was a few times i had I had some fights and stuff but luckily uh they were looked past but yeah i mean i think if if it wasn't for my experience at boarding school and being away from home and um and just going through those hard times you know with being at a white school um i don't think i, I would be where i was today uh, where i am today to be fair so you're a south auckland boy eh? yeah so you, do you think you get a lot of your hustle mentality and stuff from um, what? Well, actually, what was your upbringing like there? Oh man, to be honest with you, um, you know, I feel bad. I feel bad when I say this, but it's just the truth. But um, just that typical Islander upbringing, yeah. um, a lot of, a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of good times, but there was a, a lot more bad times. It's, violence alcohol every everywhere the drugs um grew up in a pretty pretty uh, violent had a bit pretty uh violent upbringing but you know um i think it's just i think it's just normal it's normal you know growing up yeah. and being in that environment people just don't know any better yeah so yeah. you know i don't look back on it and i don't hate hate the old boy for it or anything like you know he's definitely learnt, like learn from all that but yes as i said people just don't know any better i think it takes a lot to realize as well like that it is is that it isn't normal way like i think of stuff as well like um even just like you know the the classic psalm one thing like um don't talk back to your elders like if they mm. say do it you don't question it you just do it mm. like mm. I think growing up you're like oh that's just how it is you respect your yeah. elders. but then you think um, like you know you get you get you get sort of I guess tested by people and then you realize like fuck that's probably actually not the way to go hey eh? like i'm probably yeah, like, it's there. yeah. like yeah. for sure for Did sure ever sort of have a say and um like it shouldn't just be about you know as we grew up like you, the elders are everything and what they say goes you know what i mean yeah i i think you know there's some aspects to that that you know brings a lot of truth because you you do learn to respect people that have gone through certain experiences in their life that are, are obviously older than you. But then 
the idea to like have an open conversation with you know um like my mum or dad it would it wouldn't it would always look be looked at as like back chat so then you get a hiding and then you're like shit i'm not gonna do that again but then you know and then when i'd, I'd go to um when i went to start going to kings and i would uh, interact with like my friends families and just the conversations they were having and the way they communicated with each other mm-hmm. i was like what the hell this is this is buzzy <laughs> why isn't he getting beaten up man <laughs> but yeah <laughs> why is he getting a hiding man <laughs> something's wrong <laughs> so yeah yeah it's um yeah it's 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 one of those things you know that um if you don't know any better you just it just it just seems like back chat yeah uh, well in in one in the space of would we'll change up a bit in the space of a week bro i've got two jordans on the podcast i, got, I had jordan ricky on um last week my boy my boy yeah and which brings me to my next question bro who do you think are the hottest nrl players you named them already man you're gonna go him yeah bro he is man because you've got to think about you've got to think about here he hasn't matured yet in regards to that like look mm. so for <laughs> I feel we're talking so so passionately about this <laughs> so, so much passion in these words but his body, his body, his age, the way his body is, the way his, you know, his face, the way he plays, man, he's got it all at such a young age already. You know what I mean? Um, that smile, man, you can't beat it. <laughs> so I honestly reckon that he, yeah. And if he was a bit, if he was naughty, like if he played up a little bit, I think his, his stock would rise for sure. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Okay. So like when you're a good player, yeah. sort of like you're a good player you're a good role model but then when you're you play up you just people like all eyes are on you right yeah. and then you then you then start being the role model <laughs> that's that's how i'd go about it <laughs> but it'll be a little bit naughty here and then play the game you know, test the game. waters test the waters a little <laughs> who, who else bro who else is up there in your rankings big tino big tino um he's he's another humble humble dog um who else man about reese walsh bro i see everyone like uh, every second post is about this cat yeah man yeah, yeah he's a he's a glamour um and i don't mean this disrespectfully you know like height, you have to take all things into consideration height you know um to build a six pack <laughs> you know what i mean you're scoring tries so I mean, yeah, he he ticks a lot of the boxes for me. Also, yeah, he'd be he'd be top five for me for sure. Um, man, the list is so long, bro. I'm very passionate about that list. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll switch back to the other side of the fence, bro. Um, if I could, if I could say you could spend three nights in a row with the top three girls you'd spend them with, who would you pick? Um. I'd go back to uh, one of my old favorites, um, Helen Clark. I'd go to Helen. <laughs> um, that's that intellectual, uh, that intellectual. <laughs> you sit and have chats all night. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's that intellectual stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you go Kim K for sure. Um, oh. Find out you know, the nitty gritty stuff about Kanye for sure. Uh, and I'd say Mumsy right now, but I can't name names. I can't name names. Mumsy, yeah. I'd say Mumsy though, yeah, Mumsy for sure. Top secret Mumsy. Top what? secret Mumsy, no I'll, names. I want to see how your brain works. And if you could spend one, um, if you could go to dinner with one person in the world, who would it be? Just to sit down and like pick their brain. Ooh. I would most likely go oh, that's a good question man that's a really good question I'd most likely go Jean Basquiat who? Uh, Jean Michael Basquiat he's a he's a um, he's an American artist he's he's dead now yeah but um, man this guy was like this guy was homeless um, African American living on yeah, living on the streets, like no food and stuff, and just his just his story and just his way of thinking 
just like his artwork as well was crazy. Like his artwork now sells for like 110 mil, like insane, like insane. And um, just the way his brain, like just the way his brain works back in those those times, is just unmatched. Eh? So I think I would, yeah, I'd, I'd sit down with him, have dinner with him. Bro, I don't know if you remember. Um, I think it was last year. I, I had like a. Um, summer collection release party because I, I run a clothing brand as well called 138 yeah. um, mm-hmm. and we had like a we were releasing like a big summer collection so we hosted this like party for it um, so like we sold them to like people who've been a part of our journey from the start and whatnot um, yeah. I had three boys come and they posted a photo they dressed as you you um, scope oh. <laughs> you remember that and, no- and normie yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Bro. Yeah, bro. That was for the party, bro. Shut. So that was shut. Crack up. <laughs> bro, so that was crack up. Shout out to Kobe Milne, Kahu Craig, and um, who else was on there? There was three boys. Oh, um, Alex Nankerville playing for the yeah, team. yeah, bro. That was um, that was funny as I was on a bender actually when that <laughs> when that photo came about when we took out that original photo and then they redid it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I was the only, I think it was me and Scope. We're on a bender in Byron. <laughs> Dude, what happened when you saw it? Were you, were you like, what the fuck was? Yeah, yeah, it was, that was sort of at a time where my, like people started following me and yeah. like my interactions with YKTI members and shit started like getting pretty full on. I was just like, what the hell is this? is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was cool, man. It's like, I'm always grateful for that type of stuff, eh? Because it's, it's surreal at times. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> well, imit- imitation is the biggest form of flattery, eh? Like, that's obvious. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, is- yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool. And I always get people... Um, the weirdest thing for me is when people try to FaceTime me when they're partying and shit. <laughs> but, bro, people literally... I had to turn off my FaceTimes on my, on my phone. Uh, did you need to change thing? I got it. You keep going. Sweet. Yeah. Um, I, I, um, I needed to turn my FaceTime off. Um, I need to, need to turn my FaceTime off my Instagram because people get FaceTiming me. And then like, <laughs> like was, crazy. was it up on the gram or something? No, 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 no. You know, you can FaceTime people on Instagram, like, um, oh, you can video call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So people were just doing that. And then I, when I started, I felt, I felt obliged to message everyone back. Yeah. So like I'd get heaps of DMs and I'd be like, oh, you know, I didn't want to think that I was better than anyone else. So I'd just I'd reply, re- reply to everyone, yeah. uh, as many people as I could. And um, they would just, just people just would, would just take it too far and start sending me photos and fucking FaceTiming me and like sending me weird shit and like just like, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. And then some people were like, oh, you're too good for me. And then I was like, oh, man, I'm just, I just don't know you, bro. <laughs> you know, so, so like, I've eased up on that a bit. But, yeah, yeah. What's yeah, crazy? This question came through a, bit, a wee bit, bro. Um, people want to know your body count. And don't give me no bullshit answer, like, three or something either, because we have, I, I, I'd say I have a fair idea, but um, what's your body count? Fives, sixes, maybe. Hundies. Yeah. Six light. Oh, Jesus. How old are you? Don't, don't quote me on that, eh? <laughs> I'm 29. <laughs> That's kiddies numbers, man. <laughs> what is the average on there? Holy Who knows, man? Shit. Good shit. Yeah, I went through a bit of a bad patch of my life. I wouldn't call uh, it. I just wanted, yeah, as we said, we just go you know, be honest as possible. But yeah, it was it's up there. <laughs> um, bro, tall, tall poppy, bro. Um, in New Zealand, I think I've heard you talk about it before a little bit. But mm. massive issue in New Zealand. I talk about it heaps. Um, mm. me off, man. And something I noticed when I moved to Aussie, it, um, was how different it was in terms of that. Like, so like you go. Yeah say somewhere like our, our my rugby team in um in New Zealand we're playing and 
um, we were like, you know, you're doing well, or you post a photo and you get mocked and shit like that. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and oh, Aussie and like fucking everyone's gassing you up. Like everyone's like, fucking no. yeah. It's so different. Yeah. Massively. Um, we were talking about this yesterday, slightly in the podcast yesterday. And um, I think, uh, I, th- I think like New Zealand, New Zealanders have a, have a thing where like, I, th- I think it spans back to like, could be, you know, back to childhood, right? Yeah. You always talk, I, th- I, th- I think, um, especially in the like, Islanders and uh, Maori communities and stuff, you're always suppressed on how you feel or like when you, when you cry or whatever, when you're a kid, when you cry, you're told just shut up, harden up or, um, you know, you come, you say something, you get called stupid or people like, you know, it's, you just get laughed at from your family. <laughs> so I, I feel like that's the, that culture is created at such a young age that when you see people step out of their comfort zone to do, to do something, you're instantly you're like, you start laughing at it and, and stuff. I feel like Kiwis jump on board when there's already traction there, when, you know, the Australian crowd's loving it, maybe people in the US are loving it, and then they're like, oh, yeah, grass, this is sick. Yeah. But, um, you know, and you're right, in, in Australia, that's what I love about Australia. Most people over here are just, you know, everyone's a bit of a go-getter. So everyone, you know, there's still people that talk shit and stuff, but it's always behind closed doors. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely... It, it's different. It's different to back home. I mean, I remember when I started at YKTR, the amount of messages I got from guys back home, like, who do you think you are? You yeah. know, like, yeah. you're nobody. Um, you know, sometimes that stuff, it's, it's hurtful, but um, it comes back to me painting was when you put yourself out there, uh, you attract pe- like-minded people yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, eventually. So for me, it was... Um, you know, it was, I was like pretty grateful for obviously starting uh, to paint art because that then led me to being able to have a bit of thick skin when I jumped into podcasting because I'd get, like, I'd get, I'd get hammered. And like, even in comments as well, people would be like, who, who is this random yeah. But if you just, if you stick to what makes you happy and what you actually believe in, then that's, that then will attract like minded people. And then you'll see those haters start sneaking back in. But there's, there's, that probably stems a lot from that humility thing as well. Eh? Like we're like Kiwis were like, fuck, be humble. Everything's always about being humble. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, you know, I'll post a photo of me just thinking I'm the shit and I genuinely believe it. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you know, like at the start, people were like, you know, grilling me, even mates and shit from back home, grilling me, grilling me, grilling me. And then eventually it just gets to a point where they just stop. And then, yeah. you know, yeah, that like for sure. So, I, when I started my um, like my stuff, for my clothing brand. Wait there, wait there, bro. I'm just gonna shut this door. Wait there. <laughs> this guy does it like twice a day. What is it? It's a fucking air block, that leaf block. Can you hear it or not? Yeah, I can hear. It. I thought someone was listening to like a hard out scary movie or something. No, no, no. Sorry about that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting from home, bro. I can't, I can't do much about it. <laughs> Fuck, what are we talking about? Um, um, Fuck, like tall poppy syndrome. Yeah, so when I started my stuff, bro, and obviously, like I've been trying to go off the. Um, documenting my journey i started vlogging podcasting yeah. All shit. um yeah just like jumping in front of the camera videoing my everyday and stuff and yeah always like taking the puss out of you like fucking yeah no one cares about what you're doing and shit like that yeah and, yeah like, yeah i guess it, that makes it almost harder to try and crack it when you're starting something that's a little bit different in new zealand as a young um new zealand kiwi kiwi because yeah have the backlash of all your mates and stuff as well that are just like mm. i have to like get past the judgment sort of thing um, yeah uh, to get through it and what you just said before like how you are sort of attracts like the people around you and stuff i jumped on yeah up. the right people like-minded people yeah bro i don't know if you know dude um that satay noodle house dude yeah yeah and, and he's, he's a legend 
Yeah, bro. And he was talking about um on the podcast I did with him, like your vibe attracts your tribe. And I was like, fuck, that's so true, bro. Like the people, the way you act and the way like you just be yourself. And although you think you might be pissing off guys that uh your mates, like essentially you'll realize who your mates are and who aren't, and like you end yeah. up better people and people that are more suited yeah. to hundred percent. I um I I sort of found that out. There was a lot of my mates. Um, in my circle that were just like having a laugh about it and yeah. stuff and you're like it's it's somewhat warranted right because you're trying to get somewhere <laughs> like, yeah people be like, oh, what, what? like who gives a fuck about what you do in your life and you're vlogging this and doing that and yeah as you said bro it's, it's about the vibe and you're like you attract like-minded people at the end of the day so if you stay true to yourself like i mean and you just just comes to a point where you just like stop caring what people think, you know. That's exactly um, it, man. Hundred percent. You just like fuck. You know, even people I, like you always get. You always get guys that like put down these people on TikTok and all that, but like, these guys are becoming millionaires off <laughs> off their stuff. You know, they they're able to live however they however they please just off doing little videos. Um, yeah. So, I mean. Remember back I mean, in the day, everyone hated Justin Bieber. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I mean, like rich. <laughs> if you gave that person the opportunity to say, "Hey, listen, I'll make you a millionaire if you post these TikToks, or you keep working construction," yeah. like, you know what they'd pick. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's um, just human nature is to ha- to hate on someone, bro, until until they prove you wrong, and then you just jump back on the train. Really, it's almost like that tall poppy thing again, eh? But like, 100. even that um. I don't know if you saw when KJ Upper was talking about it, bro. Did you see that? Mm. Uh, I didn't see that. No. Oh, potentially. He was weighing like he was weighing in about like they were sort of talking to him about New Zealand and stuff. And he was just like, fuck, there's just a massive tall poppy syndrome problem there. I hated it. Like I'm glad I'm out of it. And and mm. all that sort of shit. But I was just thinking, like, guys like him, like with so much status and so much like say, like, fuck. We need a few guys like that to just fucking change it out, change the game. Like you guys are changing, yeah. like, and then that sort of sense, like you're out there just doing your thing. You've inspired guys like myself to go out and do this sort of stuff that I wouldn't have in the past. So, yeah, well, I think the difference from myself and like, you know, boys like you and some of the other lads that uh, jumped on their potties and stuff is that I was really lucky that I got to walk into a platform that was already set for me. So yeah. I, I, I don't think. Um, I copped as much criticism because there had already been like a set platform for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, for sure, like um, this, yeah, it's, it's, New Zealand's just such a such a crazy place, you know, because pe- yeah. people just hate on anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything, you know, anything, man. It's, it's funny, but I haven't been home since I started at YKTR, so um no, oh, actually, I've been home once, I think. Yeah, but I mean, luckily for me, it's been a part of YKTR now. But I remember when I started um, vlogging and all that, and it was such a new space over here. People, were, you know, people were like, "What the fuck's this guy up to?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clothing business, you know, or whatever. And and then, yeah, it just. I'm pretty sure those people ended up like they asked for clothes and shit. <laughs> so, so yeah, it it just all comes full circle if you just stay true to it, man. Bro, you fucked up a few times at the studio. I remember seeing, um, I remember seeing mm-hmm. Ice and that talking about it a couple of times. You like talk about that or what? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. It was a few. I remember, I remember on, uh, I watched a bit of the Inside by KTR. So I was talking, I think they were talking about, um, you coming in being a bit of a larrikin or something, yeah. something happened, what happened? Um, if it's the time that I'm thinking about, because there's, there's other times, there's <laughs> other times where I've been fucking crazy and then luckily no one hears about it but i think this specific time i i got um i thought they were were doing a companion and i thought that there was a game on at um there was a game on at like i thought it was on at like five five thirty or something like that six and then but it was on at like eight (laughs) forty so then i went we all went to the pub and i got fucking blind and then i'm like fuck we better get back to the office and because everyone was like drinking really slowly <laughs> i was like fuck, we better get back into the office man the game starts in like half an hour they're like no it's at like eight and i was like holy shit 
because before we went to the pub, I was shotgunning beers. <laughs> Just for like, just for like, hey guys, a companion's on. And then I shotgun probably about nine beers, 10 beers before we went to the pub. And then I went to the pub, smacked it heaps more. And then I came and I came back and I was gone, bro. And I wasn't sloppy, but I just was not holding back on what anything I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just saying some outrageous shit. On and, the companion. Um, on the companion then. And I'm pretty sure there was like four or 5,000 people watching, something like that. <laughs> And then, like, Scope would say something to, like, try and be like, stop, like, stop, like, try and interrupt me. I'll be like, yeah, yeah. let me talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me talk. Oh, and then, like, half time came up, and then they're like, oh, you can go if you want. And I'm like, ah, fuck, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking off. <laughs> and then I left, bro. And I was like, I didn't even think anything about it. And then the next morning, I, well, I got the call of doom from ice. <laughs> it's like, fuck. But the, the thing, the reason why they, they didn't really, care that I was being American just some of the things that I said just were like a little bit willy-nilly so and they had they they had to cut the content because it just wasn't acceptable for like you know the shit that we put out there and yeah right it's a bit a bit stupid so um you know then it just waste you know you waste the boys time Lukey lives fucking ages away you know Jackson finished work at like four or something like that and then they had to stay back all night and then so for them to set that all up and then for me to go on there and fucking be crazy, too crazy, because usually I'm always crazy, but yeah, to be too crazy, it just wastes their time. So that was more the issue. Yeah, right. Oh, but that's, that's true enough. You've got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> yeah, and, bro. And but I, yeah, you, I, I think just, yeah, I think, you know, sometimes well, for myself, just understanding that the platform that we have, you know, has a ripple effect on things that are said. So, yeah, um, yeah, learn from it. Yeah, had a laugh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've still got the footage, eh? But <laughs> Lukey, Lukey sort of takes screenshots of certain times. Oh yeah, yeah. Like and sends it to the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, fuck! If that ever aired out, I'd be roasted. Was it not? Was it not live? No, it was live. But then they they didn't put it out. They didn't chop it up then they, they didn't um, put it out there because <laughs> it was just too outrageous. <laughs> the boys were talking about footy and I was like, oh, I'm just being a fuck with. I guess you gotta like it's it's pretty tough because like say the situation you're in, like obviously you're all boys, you're all mates and shit, and it's like remembering the that obviously it's still a business. Balance. Yeah, and there's a balance and there's gotta be like the there's there's gotta be fine lines and stuff, otherwise um shit oh, just- yeah. Yeah, I think as well, um, certain things that I said, you, I've got to keep in mind, like obviously Ice and I are, are really good mates and, um, you know, he started this business from nothing. So it's, you know, with the whole cancel culture going on, going on at the moment, you know, one thing can just put that all to bed, you know. So I think for me, it was just like, that was, you know, a pretty shit move on my behalf because I was like, fuck, I didn't even think of it like that, you know, because you put out so much content, you say so many stupid things that you just, you know, it just goes over your head. Yeah. You're like, oh, no one's going to see that. And then just boom, one takes one person just to blow it up. <clears throat> you fucking got to make mistakes to learn, eh? So yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. I don't see that happening ever again. I mean, went up to Brisbane and um, they named the weekend the magic, magic bender for magic round. And <laughs> it was like, do not, do not fuck up. <laughs> do not fuck up, man. Do not go crazy. So, I think is uh, yeah. It's just when I went up there, I was actually the first one to go to bed and like didn't drink that much, didn't play up. <laughs> so oh, that was pretty good. Oh, Lukey was coming back with chicks and shit. It's funny as. <laughs> Bro, I just saw you got the blue Turk. Yeah. I also heard um, that your new mumsy got it for you. Nah, fuck no, bro. <laughs> she was even in shock, man. She was like, oh, eh? Um, Did you just wake up and you had it or? Oh, man, we were, like, we were literally just around the kitchen table at like seven, seven o'clock, like the kitchen bench and just having a few beers, uh, having a wine. And then I just checked, I just went on my Instagram and it just said, oh, your account has been verified. You said like a real tick next to your name. And then I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm grateful. 
<laughs> it's actually the the cool thing for I don't really care about the the blue tick and uh, everyone's like oh but for me it was just it's easier for me to approach people to come on my podcast hundred percent yeah so, like it almost verifies the right for me to ask people to come on because then they're like they're just they just assume oh shit this guy must yeah yeah have, yeah do this or have that or be this so so it, it has been much easier to to speak to people and and um get people on my podcast like next week um i've got one of the did you hear about that fake gridiron team no over in the states there's just like this fake high, uh, high school team that this this scam artist put together and like tricked espn on television like putting it on tv the game and they played one of the top high school teams well, did you hear about that no oh man i can't I, yeah heaps of people like a few people haven't heard about it but if you like if you're not into football but it was all over espn and house of highlights pretty much the scam artist went in as a head head coach created a fake high school and got all these like adults <laughs> like all these like adults high school dropouts to come and play for this team and then they played the one of the top gridiron team teams in in the states and they, they got smoked like 58 nil but that was like it was like all over the sport how, <laughs> how did they get a game against well i don't really know the t's and c's behind it but anyways i reached out to one of the coaches of your the team kidding. yeah bro yeah i reached out to one of the coaches like two days ago and he hit me back up straight away. I was like, bro, I'd love to have you on the podcast. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm like, happy to talk about anything. He's like, yeah, I'll t- talk about the whole thing. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> and then like uh, through, a f- through another friend of mine, um, her husband uh, is a wide receiver at the at place for Texans. And yeah. um, he's going to jump on the podcast next week as well. Unreal. Yeah. So it's just like, I mean, yeah. Like the blue tick is just, it actually has helped me out to like almost just make it so much easier to approach people and ask them to come on my podcast. And even with, even if, even with brands as well, um, trying to get sponsors. Since I've got that, I've had so many more inquiries on like sponsorship opportunities for my podcast, for YKTR. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it just, it, 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 it's almost just like people see that and they go, oh, okay, sweet. Like, He's verified. He must bring something to the table. How how do you run your sponsorships, bro? Like, do you have like one sponsor on at a time, or no? Ice, Ice, and Loki, they sort all that stuff out. Um, I've sort of taken it upon myself to try and um, bring more sponsorship opportunities to the table. So um, we're working on a few things right now. Um, I got hit up by the Spirits Company through a friend. I want to sponsor Grouse and a few Reds. So I've got a meeting with them either this afternoon or next week. So, um, you know, and they run like Captain Morgan and fucking all that. So and they're like keen as to jump in on the space. Um, uh, my contact there is like they're pretty cashed up as well. So who knows what that'll look like, but hopefully um, we can like provide a service that they'll be interested in, which I'm pretty sure they will be because they approached me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you guys are building something cool, bro. And- I love seeing it. It's actually, it's sort of like inspired me to, um, like if I think of something I want to do like every day for the rest of my life, like if I could create something like you guys where I could have all my mates and we just fuck around and we um, create good content and we build this platform that people want to be a part of and shit like, and it's like that, that would be like a dream goal for me. So like mm. that, that you guys do it and like you guys can do it and see us what he's built and um, have you yeah. got, fucking cool to watch and it gives sort yeah, of sick. bucks like us to uh i guess uh the goals we're trying to aspire to or just like a a reminder that like fuck you can get there or you can do it like you just yeah 100 100 percent and um i think the cool thing is as well is that um like ice like you know chico normie it doesn't just stop at clothes now. Like it's moving to like different different businesses, different opportunities. So, you know, um, hopefully, um, I'll be a part of you know that any opportunity moving forward, which I'm sure it will be. But you know, just to have that, as you said, like to wake up, you know, on a Monday morning or whenever, and just be like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna be going to like 
good environment and blah 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 that like that's probably the biggest thing sometimes you're like Fuck, i'm 29 you know i should be doing this i should be doing that but then as i said like if you stay true to what makes you happy and and you put like 100 percent into it then you just attract opportunities yeah you probably wouldn't think you would you know even even with these companies like uh, my mate's um com- the company that he works for hitting him up and then he had he hit me up and i went for a walk with another mate the other day and he's like oh my client owns a, uh is a chief executive of this betting company and he'd love to speak to you like so it's just shit like that it's just it's starting to come about you know just through like consistent podcasting and content um and just doing stuff that makes us happy. I bet it doesn't feel like you're working, bro. No, nah, not at all, man. Not at all. I think during lockdown, it's been like a, it's been, it's been weird podcasting from home, not seeing the boys every day. Like the content's obviously slowed down because you, because you can't really be around each other. Um, yeah. But I mean, when we're when we when we're going to be in the office, you know, we'll be traveling a lot together. Oh, shit. Right there. <laughs> We'll be, we'll be traveling a lot together um we'll be in the office back in the office every day um you know it does feel like work because you know but it's it's like it's fucking sick i love it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. let's go all right well you're just like you're just laughing every day <laughs> Let, let's move on to another area of we, we sort of touched on on um, we'll talk about Jordan Simi, the love doctor, bro. Because obviously you came up, you, you were sort of like, when you came onto the scene, I guess, like okay, ATR, that was kind of your realm. Like the the relationships, the um, sex life. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Love doctor. It's all a, it's all a scam, man. <laughs> I suck at relationships. Um, what, what, I have to, I have to keep my, my, um, my listeners happy, bro. So, uh, we got we got a few um things that come in. I try to slide them in during the podcast. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna name him, but I'll say he owns a famous Cambodian restaurant in South Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, a naughty cunt, man. I reckon. What's the nastiest shit you've done to a girl, and vice versa? Um. This is all respectfully, obviously. Um, of course. Fuck. <laughs> Bro, the funny thing is, is I'm not, I'm actually not that, like, I'm actually not that, like, naughty like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> I'm, actually not, I'm actually not naughty like that, bro. Um, I mean... I can't, I can't even think of any, bro, to be honest with you. Like, <laughs> For fuck's sake. It's just like, fuck, honestly, I can't even, I can, like, not, I can't even think of anything, bro. Like, I'm, I'm actually like, I'm actually, actually sucking mid. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, I said it. <laughs> A few people actually ask, bro, is um, when, when are you applying for Love Island Australia? um well bro the funny the funny thing is that actually was in the in the works um yeah that was in the works and um and i met i met mumsy and i was sort of a bit hesitant to go on because you know the, knowing me i'd be a fucking rat bag on there and then <laughs> absolutely shed on but that was in the works and yeah, I wasn't, I was 50-50 from the start and then I met Mumsy and I was like, oh. Oh, so you were already going on it? Yeah, it was on the work, it was in the works, yeah, it was in, in pretty much in the barrel, like locked up and then we were just like, I just was like, oh, nah, and then plus COVID as well, there wasn't really too, many, too much communication between it and then I just was like, I just wasn't keen, I just wasn't keen, so I ended up just pulling the plug on it. Oh shit! How fucking out the gate would that have been? Yeah, that would have been funny, man. 
Um, but I feel like, I feel like, to be honest, like I, I wouldn't have been going on there to find love anyways. I mean, no one, I don't think anyone does. Um, you know, the, the, the lifestyle that you can potentially get after a show like that is obviously life-changing. But I waited up and the things that we do at YKTR and the direction I'm already going in, I mean, it's a slow, it's a, it's a slower burn, but I'm already doing what, you know, majority of these guys will come off the show doing anyway. So yeah. I just felt, I just didn't find the need to, to want to go on there. I mean, and I would have gotten absolutely grilled. <laughs> I reckon I wouldn't have done well. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you watch Love Island UK? Yes, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every night I, I wasn't really into reality TV. Yeah. And then um, baby girl was just like, oh, let's watch this, let's watch this. And we're in lockdown anyway. So I was like, okay, sweet. And then I ended up getting into it. But it was funny. We were talking about it yesterday on Grass and a Few Reds that like the cheat- the cheaters ended up winning. Yeah, but. Like, I'm, that's what, I'm confused by that. I, and that's all voted by the public too. So. Yeah, yeah. When, you know what I mean? You just oh. can't win. Bro, I was exactly um, the same. Like me and um, like my my missus partner. Ah, oh, my missus partner. My missus brother. <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck? <laughs> my missus brother. We're 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 all watching it here, um, and like Liam comes back and sweet talks his way the fuck back in. Yeah, yeah. Just his bro, it's his eye contact and his mannerisms. Yeah, bro. And just like girls are like, oh my god. And he, I I believe he does love her. But at the end of the day, how can you win a, a, a love show? I mean, I mean, it's something like, you know, oh, you, you got to get over it and shit like that. But even that Jake guy, he didn't cheat at all. Yeah. He didn't cheat, didn't play up at all, didn't look at any other chicks. And he got absolutely grilled <laughs> just, for being a good, just for being a good guy that wasn't too, like, too touchy-feely with his missus. And I just thought to myself, oh, you just can't win, bro. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, when, when that shit was happening, I was just like, um, I, I just felt like they were two different people. Like he just wasn't as clingy. He wasn't as like, yeah, like full on. And everyone go, oh, he doesn't love her. I'm like, oh, fuck. You're my girlfriend. You're my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. He's a funny kind of, you're my girlfriend. I, um, it makes me think though, uh, some of it that make me think like, oh, how much of the shit that happens on it do you not see? Like, you know, like mm. it's apparently, yeah. Like there was a live not that long ago, and my missus was watching it. Like all the contestants talking about it, and they were just like, um, just saying heaps of shit that happens on it. Like they have this thing they called it, like the voice of God, and it was like they had big speakers in Love Island that like would like go, oh Hugo to Sunbed one, and like they'd walk over to the Sunbed, you know, like just heaps oh. of shit you don't know, and like um, like stuff like um, Liam got told that he got told to change out of his out- outfits heaps because but fuck with the cameras and um and they were like and Hugo was talking to his family about some um fucked up thing that happened at the very start. Um and then his family like, oh what? And they're like, oh did you not like know about that? And he was like, no, nah, I wasn't on it. And like, he was like Yeah. And apparently like Faye wasn't even actually that fucking psycho, but they just made her out like she was. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's just heaps of shit there. Like I'm just like, fuck is it? Yeah, it's always like that. It's just that's just they just need to make a good TV and they, they killed it. Like at the start of the season, I was like, oh, this is going to be rats. But yeah, even oh, like the rig's not in, in good shape too. So I was just picturing like going on and fucking, you know, having the dad bot of doom and just being fucking. Could you imagine that, bro? Just like everyone's ripped to shreds and you just got this fucking, you know, this is mudders walk out. <laughs> Just with a VB. <laughs> like, hey, someone pick me. <laughs> what well, it definitely would have been a fucking cool experience though. But at the same time, like you gotta weigh it up with your life and like fuck, obviously if you're happy with yeah. what you don't need to do it, then you don't need to do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, nah, I just I, I wasn't I wasn't keen, man. I mean, I am who I am now with the boys because it's like but in environments like that, who knows how I'd go. Wait, where's your um where's your go to spots in the shire, bro? Just next door, bro. Let's go next door for a bacon and egg roll, coffee, watch the waves crash. Um, 
that's about it. Never really went out down there. Eh? You found always go out in, in Sydney and in, uh, in the city. Oh yeah, in the city. Yeah. You you ever you ever hit northies at all? Or oh, I went there once. I'd only go there to have, have a slap. That's about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. I went there one time, and then you know when you go fucking you know, in our old players down there, and then there's heaps of YKTR supporters down there. People are just like. It's yeah. like pretty overwhelming sometimes, eh? <laughs> and it's a little, I guess, it's a little bit um, quieter, eh? Like down in Cronulla, like it was yeah, all, much more chill. I got told that when I before I came over, that I was like, oh, fuck, it suck. Almost like more of a comparison to where I'm from here, the Mount. Yeah, right. Like, a lot quieter, but it's like a beach town, and um, yeah, it's chill. It's chill down there. Who you too, bro? I saw you in um, um, in scope, bro. Down at um. Miranda. Oh, shopping centre. Yeah, bro. Because I lived yeah. like across from it. Oh fuck! You should have seen that. <laughs> I seen you fucking walking around, bro. I was on like the second floor. You were down on the bottom. And I seen you, and I was like, oh fuck, that's it. And I seen you like faking like step out. Step. <laughs> you were faking a step back past the pole, bro. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's a fucking American. <laughs> you got to. I'm about that life, man. I'm about that life. <laughs> Um, back to the love doctor, bro. You, you see, mm. you're in town, bro. You see a busy that you want, you like, um, yep. what's your plan of attack? Man, I'm pretty, I'm pretty straightforward. Eh? If I'm, if I'm into a girl, like I don't really like beating around the bush. I'll just check the vibes. Um, I'll just go straight up to her and just put her up if she wants a drink or just come, come jump on the table with the boys. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'll just go, if, if, if she's not keen, then I'm just like, yeah, sweet. But to be honest, I've ne- I actually don't go out to meet girls, bro. Like, I just go out to get on the piss with the boys. And then, yeah. like, I'm, I've never really been one to, like, pick up. I know I know it's hard to believe, but it's actually genuine. Like, I don't, I just don't have one-night stands in today. I just don't. I just don't. I just not, I could not be bothered doing it and would not be into it, eh? <laughs> Bro, a lot of people I've had, like, I've had like one or two back in the day and then fucking you wake up and you're like oh shit like you promised to drop her off and then you, you don't want to drop her off and then you're just like you know what I mean you're just like this is awkward do I, do I buy breakfast or do I just fucking order an Uber or, and then she's like oh you gotta pick you gotta drop me off and then you're like oh, I'm still drunk so oh. there's too much there's too, there's too many there's too many variables for me man and I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm like, I can't do it. First of all, don't bullshit me that you've had one or two after you just told me your body counts like five or six hundred. <laughs> don't tell me you've had five or six hundred relationships and you're 29, you bullshitting bastard. Fuck, <laughs> you're full of it. Okay, I understand, I understand. <laughs> no, but, um, man yeah, <laughs> that's, it, it's, it's, it's all Instagram, man. It's all Instagram. <laughs> A lot of people are asking when when they're gonna see a Jordan Simi only fans. Jordan Simi only fans. Oh, bro, nah, that's not happening. But um, join the Doozy Club. <laughs> join the Doozy Club. That's pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. You'll see a fucking a lot of shenanigans in there, but nah, nah. You want to stay? Yeah, yeah. Um, is it Corinna or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How much she makes off it, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, One chick that I had on my podcast, she reckon she makes like you know twenty G a month. Wait, what? This chick that I got on my potty a few few episodes ago, she reckon she makes like twenty K a month just off like a, and she doesn't have like a massive following or anything. But see, it's this is my outlook on OnlyFans, bro. Is I mean, depending on the content you put out, like some chicks only put out like photos of them in bikinis and yeah. you know and i feel like I've, I've i'm like good on you guys for making money off it because a lot of the time girls just put it on their instagrams for free <laughs> so uh, so it's like who i mean i think just the stigma behind only fans is like oh we're doing porn or this or that but yeah. and if 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 you can make if you can make a living and you know you're happy with your life then fucking go hard well, apparently that um that corinna corinna or whatever it is chick that like she only does like bikini pics or bra pics or whatever yeah yeah she's 
may like four mil a week, bro. I was like, you're yeah, kidding. She, you're doing what you and the planet's doing pretty much, but you're making exactly. four mil a week off it. Exactly. And it's 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 just one of those things that's frowned upon, bro, until people all start jumping on the platform, using it for other things. Yeah. I, I don't see the difference between, I mean, there are obviously girls that make a lot of money on Instagram as well, but I really don't see the difference in someone creating a business on there and there, depending on obviously the content, because there is a lot of naughty chicks that go and put up <laughs> fucking willy nilly shit. But yeah, a lot, a lot of chicks just do bikini shots and stuff. So I'm just like, man, good on you. If you can make, you, make a living out of it, then why not? You bit of, are you a bit of a um, romantic, bro? Yeah, yeah, I am, bro. I'm a bit of a simpe. I'm probably <laughs> the biggest simpe at YKTR. True. Like, I don't, I don't like a lot of people go, oh, he falls in love with everyone, he falls in love. But I, I genuinely don't, man, because I always say, like, you got to look at the, at the numbers. <laughs> I'm a numbers guy. So <laughs> the amount of chicks that I go on a date dates with to the amount of chicks that I've fallen in love with or had some type of feeling towards them is, is really, really small. So, oh, when so I love someone, hey? But so you, you, rather than looking at, like, obviously, say you had like, 10 people you fell in love with in the last three months, but you've seen 200 people. So yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I just, um, when, but when I, but when I do fall in love with someone, man, I'm just, I'm all in, you know, and I mean, sometimes it fucks me, but you know, it's, you never, if you don't put a hundred percent into something, then you just never, you know, I'm not going to get a hundred percent back. Andy, Andy, um, G or, we may as well wrap it up because I know you got mm. some to do as well. Uh, no, no, all good, man. All uh, good. I right, appreciate Sorry it. about that leaf blower, away. Eh? Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope the, um, I hope the apartment block's real clean now, bro. Um, I hope so. <laughs> it sounded very thorough. But um, thanks for your time, G. I appreciate you jumping on. Appreciate you. Um, all good. Obviously, just, just getting back to me and saying you're keen and it's such short. No, night. thanks. No, thanks for having me, man. Thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate your time. And um, I was saying to the bro yesterday, um, when uh, borders open up and you can travel again, my my plan is to come back and like link up with you guys and other podcasters back in NZ, potentially like hold a like a podcast dinner where we just like pod like actually do a podcast while we're just having a feed and just talking shit, have a few beers, have a laugh. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely hit you up when when um that that comes about. Bro, we've got a um where I do my podcast. Usually we do it in a studio up in Auckland. Um, mm. with, and like you know Pat McPhee, I know Ice talks about him a little bit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I do the podcasts in that in his studio. We are Indigo, um, him and Monty Beetham, uh, and like Mosaic and stuff. Do all their stuff there. So yeah, it'd be cool to if fuck if we can make that thing actually happen bro we could do it there 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah for sure man i want to link up with all those boys as well those guys off my fm um yeah it's it's just a waiting game now it's all it's all pretty much would be set in stone but it's just waiting on when when we can actually come back uh i will make it happen we'll keep in touch anyway um appreciate your time brother thank you thank you bro